Oh, there you are, YouTube. Do, 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 do. Subscribe if you're interested. No pressure. Hey, so I just found out from a friend that my local library sells books and other media like CDs, books on tape, and also movies for a very discounted price. Now, these are used items and donated items, so used as in they belong to the uh, library, so they've gone through, you know, plenty of rentals or borrows or whatever you say for a library. Um, so not everything's in the best shape, but they sell these things for a quarter each or five for a dollar. So I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta go. And, um, the other day we were taking our kids to the library and I was just like, let me just go downstairs to the basement and check this out. Checked it out, found like three movies. And one of them was a movie called... The Great Silence. And I didn't end up grabbing it, but I was like, I love the cover of this. So this is my library hall, I guess. I, should, I guess I should say that. I'm gonna go over my library hall. Um, but I, I need to start with this one specifically because this is the one that created the hall. I went with my kids to the library, saw this, and I was like, well, I don't know this film. I do love this cover art here, but I don't know, don't have like, you know, uh, uh, what is a quarter, but I don't have, you know, they'd have to break like a, a 20 or something like that. I don't know, I just didn't want to go through the trouble or whatever. So I just left. But then all the next day and all of today, until I went back to the library, I was thinking about this movie. And I went to another channel that sort of specializes in Westerns called The Good, Bad, and the Okay. And I was like, I'm going to go and ask them what they think of this film and then I saw they had a uh, they had they had a, a, a video dedicated to it and I was like okay that must mean it's good plus it's in uh, the the top like 10 westerns video they made and I was like okay which I did watch so I should have remembered that <laughs> but I was like I got to go back and get this so I went back hoping it was there again 25 cents and it was there so I picked it up today and picked up a bunch of other movies and I'm going to show all of those off too so the great silence um spaghetti western right and that what you would call it Italian western I guess but look at that cover art that cover art is amazing it says it comes with a booklet it does right here booklet. Um, I haven't even looked in it, but it looks like it has some nice images in it. Look at that. That's a cool image. I like that. Crosses in the snow. Oh, this makes me think of uh, The Hateful Eight. So I'm, I'm guessing Hateful Eight was probably heavily influenced by this. Look at that. Not only do you get an you know, images there that are nice, but also on the inside. Look at that. I love that. Um, one problem, though, is this disc is somewhat scratched up. I'm going to have to take that to a place that buffs them out if it doesn't work. Perhaps it will work. I don't know. But we'll see. Uh, Klaus Kinski, who, you know, Ag how do you say it? Agir? Agira? Uh, the, you know, Wrath of God. I, you know, I know him from that. Um, I haven't seen his um, vampire film, but I want to do that. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about this. I really want to watch it. Um, and the, the it's the art. The art is what caught my eye because there were a lot of, you know, very popular films, but this one really stood out because of the art. And that's that's the way all physical media should be. Pay attention to the cover. Have interesting covers. Uh, this one's not as interesting. Uh, this is a film I haven't seen, and I've sort of put it off quite a bit because it just kind of seemed like it, I, I, I don't know, it was, I, from what I was hearing, it was a, a difficult watch. So let's, let's see. Um, a Killing of a Sacred Deer. Nicole Kidman. And this guy whose name I can't remember right now. Um... He's like a part of the MCU now. He's an Eternal. I saw him in that uh, show. Gosh, he's in a lot of stuff. That that show, Chernobyl. You know, he was the one that was killing all the dogs and stuff that were hit. But I hear it's a difficult film. So I've just kind of been putting it off. But I was like, I need to watch this. But this is a rental as well. Or, you know, a 
borrower. I would say borrow from the library rather than rent from the library. But this one's sort of cracked as well and kind of needs some buffing. So we'll see uh, if that can be cleaned. I don't know. I hope. Um, next. So from when I first went and then when I went back today, there was a lot of turnover. Like I was lucky that this was still here. But some movies that weren't there before uh, I found today, one of them being The War Wagon, a Western. Picked up a lot of Westerns. Um, never, never seen this. This has John Wayne and Kirk does, <clears throat> excuse me, Kirk, Kirk, keep trying to say Kurt, Kirk Douglas in it. Um, don't believe I've seen this. If I have, I don't remember it. My stepdad loved Westerns, so they were on in the background of my life. Uh, and I didn't always pay attention to all of them. Maybe this was one of them. He was more of kind of like a spaghetti western guy anyway. Um, or just, you know, uh, Clint Eastwood westerns. I don't really remember. I don't know. Maybe he watched some John Wayne westerns, but I can't remember for sure. Next, in a beautiful snapper case. You like snapper cases? I do. I like them because of the cardboard, I think. And it just shares a relationship with VHS, which is what I primarily grew up with. So, um, I don't know, just that, that it's, it's that transitional phase, I guess. So I like that. Uh, this is one that I'm guessing was donated to the library because it doesn't have any stickers or anything. And the back of it's clean, like it was like washed once. I'm guessing it was probably part of like an estate or something because I'm guessing all of these westerns were probably like some old guy that collected western films or liked them would buy them maybe watch them once and then died and then they got donated um, so yeah like look at that right there so this is one I'm I'm sure was on in the background of my life but I never really paid attention to it and I'm regretting that so much my stepdad's not alive anymore and I don't know it's just kind of like, like there were a couple that I watched with him and it was just like, you know, I have strong memories. Like High Plains Drifter. Like that one is a film I have strong memories of watching uh, alongside. It wasn't just like in the background and I'm doing my own thing. This might have been an own thing thing. But I just wish, I don't know. I wasn't doing my own thing. I was sitting there asking questions. What do you love about this? Watching him quote. He would quote these movies. You know, just paid attention to it. So, anyway. Maybe this was one that was on in the background while I was growing up. But I don't know. Uh, the Outlaw, Josie Wales. Is this a good one? Let me know. Uh, same thing with Pale Rider. Pick this one up. Um, I love his hat right here. What do you know about this one? This one does not look as familiar to me so this might have been on in the background growing up but i don't think so it doesn't everything i'm seeing about it does not suggest so but i'm excited to eventually give it a watch clint eastwood collection somebody grabbed all these and then watched them once and then donated oh we're going to war films world war ii uh the great escape haven't seen this we got steve mcqueen james garner um, uh, Hammond, John Hammond from uh, Jurassic Park, Richard Attenborough, and who else did I read? Charles Bronson, um, and James Coburn also in this. So awesome cast. Um, but yeah, haven't seen it. You know, I've heard of it, and then I've heard of the stars in it. So I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta grab this. Look at that mug. I don't have blue eyes. My kids have blue eyes. I don't have blue eyes, nor does my wife, but both of my kids ended up with blue eyes. Am I doing the face? Did I match it? Um, what did I want to say? Did I look this one up? Outlaw? Did this one? What am I looking for here? What? Okay, I think... I looked up, I think this movie maybe had a Oscar editing nomination, maybe. 
I think this one had an editing nomination. Was it a win? Ah, I'm trying to remember. Um, next, I have another John Wayne movie. Never seen it. Called Hellfighters. Looks like he's a firefighter. Puts out fires. Uh, Sam Elliott's wife, uh, Catherine Ross. Know her famously from The Graduate is in this. Jim Hutton. Is that Timothy Hutton's father? Who knows? Nobody knows. There's probably people know. It's probably easy to find out if I were to look it up. Um, yeah, so pick that up. Don't know anything about this movie. Hmm, Vera Miles is in it. They didn't put her name up front here. It's not up front, but look, Vera Miles is enormous on the back. What's that about? Next, we have the original The Longest Yard. So, the one with Adam Sandler, was that a sequel? If I remember right, that's like a sequel, not a remake. Uh, maybe it is a remake. I don't know. But uh, I haven't seen this one that I remember. I mean, maybe when I was very little, but I don't, I don't remember. Um, Burt Reynolds. Let's try and mimic his face. Oh, look, he's like, oh, there you are, YouTube. Doo -loo -doo -loo -doo -loo -doo -loo -doo. Um, yeah, but I'd like to see this sports movie. Um, I, you know, I think I, I'm not a sports guy myself. Like, I don't watch sports. I don't play sports. But a lot of sports movies are fantastic. Like this one right here, which was nominated for Best Picture. Boom. Pride of the Yankees about Lou Gehrig, it's his story. Gary Cooper, nominated for Best Actor. This was nominated for Best Picture. I think it also had a couple other things. I did pull it up to find out because I knew it was nominated for Best Picture because I remember when I was watching all the Best Picture movies, I was also seeing films that were nominated. And I do remember seeing this one as a nominated film. Let me look up what it was nominated for. Um, wait, that's not it. Here we go. Okay, so this was, it won best film editing, probably because I think there's some like archival footage that they've also included in here, like Babe Ruth is in here, but is Babe Ruth, I think maybe some of his stuff is archival. I don't know, but I'm sure the editing together of that, um, and like I think some of the stadiums and the behind Gary Cooper are, you know, artificial or something. I, I wonder if they're talking about that kind of editing or if they mean shot to shot editing. I, I mean, I, I think they're normally talking shot to shot editing, but I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it goes beyond that. I don't know how it was back in 1943. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen this, but you know, hear great things. A lot of people think it should have won. Um, so it was nominated for Best Film Editing, which it won. It was also nominated for Best Picture. Gary Cooper as actor. Also, Best... Oh, great. I just logged out. Okay, not logged out. Um, Best Actress in a Leading Role was nominated for Teresa Wright. Best Writing nomination for, uh, for Original Story. Also, Best Writing Screenplay. Wow, they had a lot of extra categories there. Also nominated for Best Black and White Cinematography. Also nominated for uh, Black and White Art Direction. Also for Best Sound Recording. Also for Best Special Effects. Okay, so that's what I was talking about with like the uh, backgrounds and foregrounds being uh, woven together. Uh, archival footage or whatever uh, versus acted footage. And then also nominated for Best Score for a dr Drama or Comedy. So this one did very well on nominations. Only one win. Again, that was Film Editing. Very excited to watch this. My friend who I was watching all the Best Picture winners with, he went ahead and watched this one because he's a big sports fan. And he absolutely loved it and believed, I'm trying to remember what it was up against, believes it should have um, fully one for best picture. Let's take a look at 1941, 43, 43. So that's not all the King's men, is it? 
Um, oh, Miss Miniver. Okay, Mrs. Miniver. I like Mrs. Miniver, too. I mean, it's like propaganda type stuff, but yeah, maybe this would have been, you know, the better film. Um, and then the final movie here. So, so far we've gone over nine. This is the tenth one. I bought ten movies. And I got The Adventures of Robin Hood. Look at this. Look at that. Came with, like, you know, that little slip right there. Is that still called the slip? Um, it's in great condition. Both discs were in there. Very clean. Um, probably just watched once. There's like no, like barely any shelf damage even. I think it just came from a great, uh, a, a person who kept great, um, kept what am I trying to say? Kept great care of their films, I think is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, also nominated for Oscars. It was nominated for three of them. And they are Best Art Direction, Best Film Editing, and... Oh, sorry, nominate. Yeah, nominated for... Let, let me start over. Nominated for four Oscars, it won three. Sorry. It won Best Art Direction, it won Best Film Editing, and it won Original Score. However, it lost Best Picture. I remember this being a Best Picture nominee. Also, um, I studied film in graduate school, and we watched this as one of our, you know, films that we had to watch, and I don't remember why. Why did we watch this? Was it like swashbuckling type stuff? I mean, that's not what this is but maybe it was genre were we looking at genre i've been trying to remember I need to go back and like look at the syllabus or something i can't remember what we were why we studied this film maybe it was just the use of color um celebrity um i can't remember what we were covering i might have to like write my professor and ask why did we watch this movie so i've seen this one but a lot of these movies i haven't Wait, it's the only movie I've seen. It's the only movie I'm confident in saying that I've seen is Robin Hood. So I'm glad to have that in the collection. But let me give you the running total for all of these movies here. How much did this cost? I already told you it was a quarter a movie, didn't I? So yeah, this was $2 for 10 films added to the collection. Two of them I think I'm going to have to get buffed at our disc replay shop. They will do that. They charge you a buck, I think. I'll test the movies. Maybe they won't need them. Maybe the library does that and they just look scratched. I don't know. But um, yeah, really excited about it. And you know what? Even if, let's say this one is scratched beyond repair, it has awesome art. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll just... Maybe I'll just frame this. I don't know. Maybe I'll just frame this or something. I wish I could get that sticker off telling me the genre, world Italian. But I'm very happy with this haul. Um, oh, there we go. And... Um, yeah, I, I don't know when I'm going to get to all of these. Check out good, the bad, and the okay. That That's sort of the reason I went back to the library, because I saw this on the good, bad, and the okay channel. And I was like, you know what? They have a video of it. It's probably worth watching. I'm going to go back, see if that movie's there, and buy it. And they had a whole new crop of films that I wanted because when I was there the other day there were maybe three it was like this and maybe two others and the two others I wasn't even sold on actually one of them was Sacred Deer um, and the uh, third one wasn't there so yeah from the director of Django um, Alex Cox says one of the finest westerns ever A.O. Scott of the New York Times says, raw, nasty, blood-soaked, blood-soaked. 
thought I wanted to read Sacred Deer. I think Roger Ebert said something about it. What did Roger Ebert say? One of the most unforgettable films of the year. Um, anything else back here? Something about westerns by somebody. I don't know. Very, I mean, these, these two plus Pride of the Yankees, very excited about those. I think those are probably my, my favorite gets of this haul. So, I don't know, do you ever go to your library to look for movies? Because you can score big there. Check out your library, see if they sell movies on the cheap. And if they do, you gotta buy them up. Anyway, I can't believe we're at 20 minutes now. Um, if you made it through the end, I appreciate it. And, yeah, have you seen these movies? If so, what do you think of them? Which ones should I look forward to? Which ones were a bad choice. I think I saw that Hellfighters was like a, a pretty bad movie, but uh, who cares. Anyway, perhaps I'll see you tomorrow for more Pure Hangout.